Hello everyone and welcome to yet another new video at Value Matches. Kozori has just suddenly released a brand new air fryer and it absolutely needs to be thoroughly tested today without any delay. Today, we're looking at possibly the ultimate oven replacement, the Kozori Dual Blaze Twin Fry. If you really want to know if this air fryer truly replaces the oven or if it's actually better than the Ninja Flex drawer behind me, then make sure to stay tuned. Spoiler, no Ninja fight, but it still gets exciting. We don't need to discuss that an air fryer has many advantages over an oven. It cooks faster, uses less oil, and is more energy efficient. I've already made enough videos about that, but of course it also has its weaknesses. Anyone with an air fryer at home who occasionally makes larger dishes like a two kilo leg of lamb with roast vegetables or a pork shoulder with crispy potatoes knows its versatility. If you want to prepare casseroles or kebab skewers at home, you've likely experienced this issue. We simply don't have enough space in the air fryer for bigger dishes. Exactly for this occasion, the flex draw from Ninja was released and has established itself very well in the market. Of course, the competition Kosori noticed that as well, and a year later we have this magnificent piece in front of us. But just as a teaser, this thing has two heating elements, top and bottom, like the dual blaze, and can even be controlled via a smartphone. I mean, what's next? Voice controlled frying? Hey fryer, make us some fries? I'm comparing the air fryer market. Sometimes I even liken it to the mobile phone industry, where there's a similar competitive battle with Apple or Samsung constantly outdoing each other. But of course, on a completely different scale. If you like either of the two air fryers, feel free to order them using the link below. For you, the price doesn't change one bit, but this way, we can continue conducting our independent tests and help you find air fryers that suit your needs perfectly and keep you updated. Here I am again, and you can see for yourselves. This thing is just absolutely amazing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the contents as we compare the machine with the Ninja Flex drawer located behind me. Look forward to an extra accessory, namely this silicone tong. Very high quality and really well thought out, I must say. When I tested the flex drawer, I criticized that it is sometimes difficult to get the food onto the plate, especially when you have different dishes in the basket or in the individual baskets. If I have chicken wings in one zone and fries in the other, the tongs solve the problem in no time. Can you take the stuff out easily? It's a real game changer, to be honest. The disadvantage I criticized with the Ninja, specifically the wide handles on the sides, is also not solved differently with the Kusori takes up more space than necessary, but I wouldn't have another solution either. Any thoughts or ideas? Comment below with your personal secret tip. Then we have the usual paperwork, user manuals, and quick guide. Unfortunately, there are no recipes included, as is usually the case with Kursori, but instead you get really good and simple step-by-step -step instructions and a handy cooking chart to guide you through the process. Very handy if, for example, you don't know at what temperature fries get the crispiest. If you prefer to hold an actual cookbook in your hands, I've linked a cookbook just below for you. Beautifully illustrated with simple, quick recipes. Just flipping through it makes your mouth water. All right, let's move on to the technical specifications. I'll bring in the Ninja Flex drawer for this. Let's start with the space the two candidates occupy. So both are real heavyweights and take up an important part of the counter. There's hardly any noticeable difference overall. The Kasori is two centimeters wider and one centimeter deeper, but I don't think that's really a major factor in a buying decision. Let's take a closer look at the performance to volume ratio. Here, we have 2,800 watts for the Kursori compared to 2,470 watts for the Ninja, which is noteworthy. For this, the Kursori has 10 liters and the Ninja has 10.4. Kursori leads in terms of performance volume ratio, which means faster results. Who wants to wait long for their fries? Now we will measure the baskets to see where the 0.4 liters are missing. So we have 14.76 inches in width over here. On this side, it's a complete 14.96 inches. Then, as for the depth measurement, we have 8.46 inches. Also 8.46 inches, almost 8.66 inches. 4.33 inches in height. And here it is only 3.94 inches. Here you can see, for example, that Kosori has learned from experience, as we all have learned by now. Height doesn't really make a significant difference in an air fryer, because you can't stack items to cook them evenly. Since we're already talking about the cooking basket, let's take a closer look at the inserts. In my opinion, Kosori did a better job overall. More of the surface has holes, significantly enhancing its functionality. However, the holes in the middle really bother me. I can already say with complete certainty and intuition that fries will definitely fall through those holes. Ninja actually solved that a bit more cleverly, without those potential fries traps. What Ninja missed here, and what makes Kosori my clear favorite, is the innovative and impressive dual blaze feature. Here, there are not just one, but two heating elements. We already saw that with the Kozori Dual Blaze, and it's supposed to make the annoying shaking of food unnecessary. 
With the dual blaze, it worked perfectly, so there's no more annoying wobbling or shaking of your food anymore. Whether it works with this larger device, we'll see in the test shortly. In a direct comparison of the technical specifications, the Kozori clearly has the edge. But how do both of these modern devices truly compare to a traditional oven? Manufacturers often claim the oven becomes redundant. How accurate is that? Let's take a closer look at the facts. An average oven has around 3,000 watts and a capacity of about 60 liters. The Kozori brings 2,800 watts with 10 liters of volume. The more watts per liter, the faster the heating time and the shorter the cooking time. The oven has to heat a much larger space. And that's not just costly, but also very time consuming to accomplish. According to Ninja, the flex drawer is up to 46% faster in terms of preparation time. When it comes to electricity and time saving, the Ninja Flex Drawer and Twin Fry from Kozori make the oven look quite old fashioned. To the crux, the cooking surface, a large baking sheet. The cooking surface is interesting. It is about 16 by 24 inches. A medium one similar to this, approximately 40 by 30. And sure, you can definitely work in layers in the oven. The total usable area of the Kozori is 15 by 9 inches. Sure, that's a bit less, but honestly, how often do you really use the oven in multiple layers or fill the entire baking tray? Perhaps at most during a family gathering or when the neighbors are invited over for some homemade pizza. For larger dishes like a lamb shank with sides, pork shoulder with potatoes, casserole dishes, or homemade skewers for six people, the Kosori is more than sufficient. Except for the usable area, the new Kosori is at least as good, if not better and thus a perfect replacement for the oven. Of course, there are some limitations, but I would say that up to 80 or 90% of the dishes you prepare daily in the oven can also be handled by the Kosori. So the oven is only heated up for special occasions. Now let's get to the operation. Here, both of the manufacturers have chosen completely different approaches. While Ninja uses classic buttons and a dial, Kosori designed the controls like their bestseller, the Turbo Blaze, making them intuitive and user-friendly. So, a fancy one-touch display. Let me come to the front and show you this in detail. What I particularly liked about the operation is the beginner friendliness. I'll demonstrate this to you. Before I can even start the whole thing, I need to select whether I zone one, zone two, or the grand zone. If I choose zone one, it lights up orange and reminds me which setting I'm in, helping avoid confusion and ensuring I'm aware of my configuration. Here, both the temperature and time for zone one are displayed. Then I can select one of Kosori's classic functions, allowing for efficient and customized cooking according to my preferences. Air fry, roast, bake, grill, reheat, or dry. Maybe you've already noticed, when selecting the function, a small icon appears here to the left of the temperature. That stands for top and bottom heat. Actually, almost all the functions, except grilling, use both heating elements for optimal control and even results. On the grill, you can see on the left that only the top heating element is working. Furthermore, it's the only function that can generate heat up to 240 degrees. Makes sense to me, as the risk of acrylamide increases with fries and similar foods already at 180 degrees Celsius. But moving on, like with any classic dual fryer, this one also has a sink and a match function. When we press match, the current setting for zone 2 applies, ensuring both zones sync as one. The function is super useful when you want to split larger portions of fries between the two zones, or if you have two dishes that require the same cooking time. Then we have the sink function right here. If we happen to have two dishes with different cooking times, I'll gladly go ahead and demonstrate it to you all. For zone one, I choose the air fry setting for 20 minutes, then press the sink button. And only after that can I proceed to set up zone two. Here, I also choose the air fry setting, simply for about 15 minutes. If I start now, zone two will be temporarily put on hold until zone one reaches the set time. Then zone 2 starts heating. What I find really cool is that the settings are lit in bright orange, making it super easy to quickly see and understand which options have been chosen with just a brief glance. It's a very user-friendly feature, what is currently active. Very helpful indeed. Lastly, we have the grand zone configuration settings. Here you set something up once and it applies to both zones, or rather specifically to the large grand zone. But now the best part is coming up. Like with the Turbo Blaze, there are some fantastic extras here that you'll truly appreciate and enjoy. If, for example, the air fryer settings don't suit you, whether it's the time or the temperature, you should be able to change them easily. Temperature or time settings, and then hold down the function button for approximately three seconds, and now the settings should be saved successfully. Now I'm going to demonstrate the control with the phone. 
It's actually a very clear plus point for me, but there's a small catch to it. I have prepared a setting here, but if you start the whole thing, the settings will apply automatically, so no additional setup is needed. But you actually have to go over to the fryer and press the start button once more before everything really starts properly and gets going as expected in the process. Simply preheating the deep fryer from the sofa is unfortunately not an option. Nonetheless, it's a useful feature because it allows you to conveniently monitor everything from your phone and pause if necessary. Well then, it's finally time for the long-awaited practical test. Today we have the ultimate fries and fish sticks duel in both devices to see which performs better. Sounds like a delicious afternoon, right? To really test the difference or the unique features of the dual blaze function, neither device will be flipped or shaken. I'm also curious to see if the Corsori with its 2800 watts really delivers faster results. I'm going to go and open the drawers now. Put around half of it in here, making sure that the bottom is nicely and thoroughly covered. We'll do the same thing here again. Five to six. Fish sticks in. So, nothing special, but I'll show you quickly anyway. Here again. So, we've set the presets for the fries to 356 degrees for 18 minutes to ensure they cook perfectly. And for the fish sticks, we'll set 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And of course, we'll use the sink function for that. So let's go ahead and get started. See you in a little bit. And as always, we'll quickly and thoroughly do a sound volume check. Let's go ahead and begin with the cursors first. However, it's currently measuring at about 59 to 60 decibels. So let's start here. Awesome. 62, 63, a little bit louder. One to two decibels louder, but both well within range. Welcome back, time's up. After the first check, we extended the frying zones by two minutes each to ensure the fries are crispy outside and tender inside. They weren't quite crispy yet, but now everything should be perfect. So let's see how it looks here. Once, that definitely looks visually very good indeed. And here, yes, absolutely, everything is perfectly brown and deliciously crispy, with no black spots or burned areas whatsoever to be seen anywhere at all. Uniformity is definitely a good thing. So then, I'll show you the whole thing on the plate again. Now, the truly interesting part comes next. Dumping fries out of a dual zone is certainly always really intriguing and fun. second time. That looks quite good. I'm going to hold it up to the camera again. One ninja. And now once it's Kazuri. At first glance, I don't see any significant or noticeable difference. The taste test will reveal if the dual heating elements make a noticeable difference. Crispy. Done. Uh, oh, uh, no complaints. I'll go ahead and take one. Picture of salt, yet that's not the crucial point here. I don't genuinely feel a difference at the beginning. Now I'll just break one of these fish sticks in half. It's still steaming inside. Nice. Crispy, also still nicely firm and al dente. The same thing here. Feels pretty firm already. You can hear it crackle a little. Inside, it's firm and well cooked. On bite and glance, I wouldn't notice much difference. Both are quite similar in texture and appearance. To give a final conclusion once more. As I already mentioned, both results are really almost equally good. Which in turn inevitably means that the double heating elements and the better power to volume ratio of the Kosori don't make much of a considerable or significant difference overall either when fully considering the final outcomes. It truly doesn't make a huge difference. I'd honestly like to leave it as my final conclusion. Otherwise, I'm totally satisfied with both results. So let's move on to cleaning. 
The good thing is that it behaves quite similarly to a dual set sleeve. If one zone isn't clean, you can simply take out an insert plate, put it in the dishwasher, and continue using the other zone as normal. The entire basket is, of course, completely dishwasher safe and should easily fit into most standard sized dishwashers. You probably won't fit more into the same compartment. That already sounds big. There is also special baking paper suitable for dual deep fryers that you can use without any problems. However, unfortunately, there is still no parchment paper for the Grand Zone or Mega Zone, as it's called by Ninja. If you find this interesting, I could do some research and who knows, maybe I'll find a company to make special baking paper for such occasions. Of course, with our brand value matches, feel free to leave feedback in the comments. You can also find the link to the dual fryer parchment paper in the video description below. So let's finally get to the conclusion. Is the Kosori Dual Blaze Twin Fry a must have and can it really retire your oven? Absolutely yes. The Kosori addressed all the flex drawers criticisms and made significant improvements on them. And on top of that, you get extras like smartphone control, super easy operation, and they even included a silicone tong for added convenience. The frying results that we achieved with the dual blaze function were absolutely quite convincing. We didn't notice any significant difference from the um, flex draw with just one heating element, but that certainly doesn't mean it's any worse at all. It might just work perfectly fine. The results are definitely pretty good. In my honest opinion, the Kusori really makes the oven appear quite outdated. Here you can easily prepare larger dishes with sides without needing 45 minutes, unlike using a regular oven, which would take much longer. The price of 230 euros is, in my opinion, absolutely fair. The flex drawer is currently at around 200 euros, but that's probably a special offer. Normally, the price settles between 150 and 200 pounds. Regarding craftsmanship and build quality, Ninja might still have a slight edge. But the Kosori scores with the advanced double heating element and extra power. It's the clear favorite for me, and I think it's even a bit better than the flex drawer in overall performance and efficiency. As always, you can find the links to both air fryers in the video description and in the comments. And I've also included two more helpful links for you. One is for our Facebook group and the other one, for all the dedicated air fryer fans, is a recipe book specifically for dual air fryers. That's absolutely perfect for the flex draw or the twin fry, as long as you're cooking in two zones. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay crispy and delicious.